I'm Leo Phillips, host of This Must Be The Gig. We're a weekly podcast that documents everything about the world of live music. Speaking with choreographers, costume and set designers, the people who run beloved venues and festivals, and, of course, speaking with musicians about that one gig that changed their lives. Get your peek behind the curtain at consequenceofsound.net, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Wherever you're listening from today, please do hit the subscribe button, whether that's on Spotify, listening on YouTube, or where you get your podcasts from. Hit that subscribe or follow so you can keep up with all of the interviews that we do every single week. I'm Kyle Meredith. Today, my guest, Jay Maskus. He's got a new solo record out called Elastic Days. We'll talk about just how solo it is for him, as well as his uh, love affair with the drums, the arts of the guitar solo, which he is, of course, a master at. And uh, we'll also talk about his famous Big Muff sound that he's used throughout his career. It's not just music, though. He's got other loves. And we'll talk about biking and karaoke. And we'll also get an update on uh, what Dinosaur Jr. has in store next. It's Kyle Meredith with Jay Maskus. Hello. I've been listening to Elastic Days for the last, like, 24 hours or so. It's a beautiful record, man. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. I know it's out November 9th. You're actually going to be here in town in Louisville, Zanzibar, November 29th. Uh, when you're out on the solo run, do you do you keep it the solo cuts, or do you sprinkle in the Dinosaur Junior tracks, too? Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I play some Dino songs, too. Like, just uh, all over the catalog, or, or do you kind of keep it in one certain era? Well, I'm not sure. I haven't really thought about what I'm going to play. These records, I mean, um, most solo records, when artists do them, they still end up being team affairs. It's just like not with the usual band. I get the feeling that your solo projects are almost completely solo projects. Is that right? Yeah, I just have, uh, well, I have somebody playing piano, and which I never had on a dyno record, and then some just vocals. Oh, that's right, because uh, well, Mark Mulcahy's on this record too, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh-huh. That's someone that should be a lot more recognized. His work, uh, I'm such a big fan of. How far do your relationship with him go back? Uh, maybe the you know 90s or something. What brought you? What brought him on? It was just you needed the part, or was he around? Yeah, both. I heard the uh, the drums also play a big part in this record too. A new drum set. <laughs> Can you tell me about that? Well, yeah, I was just sitting there and I haven't had much outlet to play drums, so. I ended up playing it on that song, and then I just kept putting it on all the songs. What keeps you from playing that more? I have. I've been in bands, but then, of course, it's hard to keep a band going, so <laughs> that's it's all kind of falling apart. That's why the solo records come around, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's true, you know, because it didn't seem like, like you know, these days, at least, with the, like Dinosaur Jr. can happen when you need it to, or, or the solo can happen when you need it to. Is that the way it's going right now? Yeah, we've just been going, and yeah, it's just been kind of going along both things, and uh, the drumming hasn't been, uh, yeah, I'm in this band, which we just got a couple gigs in May, but it's hard to get everyone to agree to play, so oh. we haven't played for a couple years. With the songs, I mean, with these solo songs, I don't know, do you, do you write these with, with any other songs in mind or influences in mind when you're doing the solo cuts? Like, I'll compliment you on the song sometimes. I think it's my favorite off this record. I, I, I love it. And I, I'm, I know you're a fan of um, folks like Richard Thompson. I, I think I can hear a little bit of that in there with the riffage. Oh, yeah. I was also watching this uh, Terry Reed video where he's playing acoustic and he's got a drummer. That kind of inspired me to play drums, too. I like the drummer was playing rim shot. And I kept watching the video. And I was like, oh, I should do a song with rim shot. That sounds pretty good. So you can you can write a whole song around just that kind of concept? That idea? No, just the uh, the idea of putting the drums on an acoustic song, but oh, okay. like a rim shot beat. Well, 
compliments on the um, the soloing on here too, which you know that's it's a hallmark right there. Do you shoot for something that you're gonna be that you're gonna be repeating from show to show when you when you're writing solos, uh, or, or do most of these end up sort of free form on the record that you can play around with them later? Yeah, I don't really know how to replicate a solo. I just play different stuff all the time. If I try to play the same thing, it just sounds really weird, and it's hard to remember. I, it's just not my style. But I noticed at one point, I, you know, I tried to play all the leads on acoustic. And at one point, I was just like, I can't play any more leads on acoustic. <laughs> Halfway through, I switched to electric because I couldn't get any more out of playing leads on acoustic. I think it was a, a short video that just got posted recently. Someone... You were taking a tour of your house. It wasn't video; it was pictures. That's what it was, and you were showing them the, your case of big muffs and, I th- and and kind of explaining that you know that was well. I mean that that's your sound, and I I thought that must in a way take the weight off too because I don't know. There are certain points, I guess. I don't know how you feel about it, but as as fans, like you know, I guess there's an expectation for you to sound like yourself, and uh, it's like w- when you've got to wear a uniform every single day. It's like you don't have to worry about what you're dressing like at some points, and and that I don't know. Does that am I close? Is that why you kind of stick with that sound? No, I just like, you know, it's just, I like the sound, I guess, appeals to me. And that's what I keep coming back to is trying to amuse myself and get a sound that's satisfying to me. And it doesn't, it changes so incrementally that people probably wouldn't notice it changes to me, but it would probably sound the same to most people. I got to bring up the one line I think that everybody's hit on in this record too. I, I don't know if there's any story behind it, but but it is a great catchphrase there. The I don't peak too early, I don't peak at all. That's that's a hook in itself right there. I'm hoping there's some kind of scenario behind that line that that prompted that. Well, I don't know. Just thinking about yeah, when people say you know, oh, you peaked early or. And then you just think, I don't remember peaking at all, really. So I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> is, this, is, is, is this, would you say, like um, just in general or what's been projected onto you in, in your career? Uh, I don't know. It was just, it was just the general concept occurred to me. <laughs> What's happening on the artwork? It's always beautiful artwork that you have on here. Uh, it, do you know what's going on there? Well, it looks like uh, a witch is dead and then a fairy is either just paying respects to the witch or maybe will bring her back to life. I'm not sure. <laughs> Your personality, depending on what you see. Yeah. Has, uh, what, what happens after this? Has, has Dinosaur Jr. been writing? Uh, I know there was the one-off track that came out earlier this year, and I'd, I'd had I had Lou on my show actually, and 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 he said he didn't he wasn't a part of that one. You know that that you just kind of put that one out on your own under the Dinosaur Jr. name, and and I don't know. Did are are you working on that side of things as well? Yeah, we have a song coming out on uh, the TV show Animal on HBO. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. Do you get yeah, that? I did that by myself. But the band is talking, and it is. We're, we're like the band in the cartoon, but I played the, everything, and we did it. I don't know, yeah, just sometimes it's easier just to whip something out and not think about it too much. We need, for a certain, if I, we need something to happen really fast, then. Yeah, I've talked to a few people that's been on that show. Uh, that's why I was wondering if you if you lent your uh, your your acting to the show as well. Uh, do they give you any lines outside of just being the band? Yeah, we all have lines. I think I mean, unless they got cut, I don't know. I haven't seen it. <laughs> unless they got cut. Did you ever do any of the others? Uh, I mean, have you been Simpsonized yet? I feel like that you would have been a part of that at this point. Oh no, I wish that would be awesome. Yeah, I know they've mined a lot of the. Uh, <laughs> A lot of the scenes from the past ages. I, I feel like it's it's due time that you've had your Simpsons moments. It's really past time, actually. We should make well, that happen. Yeah. yeah, if you can put in a word. <laughs> we'll send it out into the universe. Jay Maskus needs to be on yeah. The Simpsons. Uh, I, I, I'll wrap it up on the lighter stuff, too. I guess maybe you've been doing biking for a long time. I, I just didn't know about it. Is that something serious in your life? Are you like a long-distance biker, or are you just a, an around-town biker? I'm, not, I'm just biking for, you know, trying to do something, some exercise. It's the only thing that I kind of can keep up with because it's not as boring as most things I can think of to exercise. I, I thought maybe that's why, you know, the interviews were always <laughs> chosen to be in the early morning. I thought, oh, I wonder if this works into his, his, like, morning biking routine or something. Yeah, it's good to do interviews while biking. I guess some people can't talk when they're biking or something, but I don't have that problem. <laughs> 
And uh, and I'll say that uh, after seeing the karaoke uh, video that that sort of made the rounds on the web, that uh, I think if you wanted to, you could really be in your Bill Murray stage of your career of just dropping in to those moments right there. And and for whatever <laughs> encouragement I can provide you to do so, it's uh, it's very entertaining, and I appreciate it. Yeah, that, that sounds strange. That was weird. <laughs> I didn't go back in that place after that. Either. Oh, really? It's like it's that you you can't go back to the, yeah. <laughs> I'm like I don't think I want to karaoke for a while. Oh man! All right, well, Jay, thank you so much. Um, again, all the compliments on Elastic Days. I, I really do love what you're doing these days, and 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 then I guess I always have, and we'll be excited to see you. That's uh, November 29th at uh, at Zanzibar. Okay, thanks. All right, Bye. man. My thanks to the. Always overly talkative, Jay Maskus. The new solo record is called Elastic Days, out on Sub Pop Records. Uh, if you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening from right now, uh, whether that's on YouTube, uh, where you get your podcast from, or if you're listening on Spotify, you can hit follow on there as well. Give a rating, leave a review, head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show every Monday through Thursday from noon to 3 Eastern, where you can also find some bonus episodes of this series. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.